Hey, this is Big Guy DIY Robert coming to you with a new video. This is probably I, more a what's involved versus a, a how to video, but I will show you what I am doing. So I guess it is kind of a how to video. But first, I kind of have to do a disclaimer here um, and then a little history. This disclaimer, it, the disclaimer is. I am not a trained or certified Mercury or Merc Cruiser mechanic. I didn't go to school to learn how to work on motors. What I was in the marine industry is in the power industry because it's different from a sailboat industry because the term is can be used in both. But in the powerboat industry, I was a rigging technician. Well, a rigging technician, at least the position that I held, is when we had boats that were ordered, that came in, came in without their motors installed, and these were outboards, not IOs or inboards. So a customer could order a boat, the motor was shipped separately from the boat, and I had to install the motor, attach all the controls, um, and then if there are any additional accessories such as radar, GPS, chart plotters, um, fish finders, VHF radios, uh, autopilot, all of that I would also install on the boat. Now we also uh, would get what they call bear haul boats. So say for example you're ordering a brand new I don't know, this is like today. You're ordering a brand new Pursuit center console. <clears throat> and they have a contractual agreement with Yamaha. If you notice, all Pursuit boats come with Yamaha motors. When we deal with Boston Whalers, they always came with Mercury motors. But a client can order a bear haul, which means no motor, no controls, no gauges. Because those gauges and controls were proprietary to with mercury engines only so a client can order a bear haul and then install a different boat or the different uh, motor manufacturer and when that happened i would install all the harness wire harness all the gauges um, attach the motors hang the motors however you want to call it install the motors and get all that running uh, as well as usually the steering controls that were installed in the boats were done by the manufacturer um, because the steering controls would work either with an Evinrude, with a Johnson, with a Mercury, with a Yamaha. It was one size fits all for steering controls, which was usually Teleflex uh, cable steering or, or uh, they had the hydraulic steering in as well at the time. Depends on the size of the boat. So I was doing twin engine installations, uh, single engine installations, and triple engine installations. Um, I had rebuilt a couple of the state police boats that ran in the Boston Harbor. Uh, they were running Evinrudes at the time. And so I would remove everything, strip that boat down to a bare hull. So there are no controls, no steering, no wires, no batteries, nothing. And then rebuild the boat from the ground up. So that's my experience as a rigging technician. Uh, I left the industry in 2004 when I moved back to my hometown um, to raise a family. So I'm kind of landlocked where I live, but I still dabble with boats. I still work on them on the side, but I will limit my ability or limit myself to what I'm gonna work on because Today, a lot of the, the boats have changed substantially um, regards to electronics and digital communication. And so there's some things I won't touch because I know I can't do it. Like I won't pull out drives anymore because <clears throat> one, I don't have a, a mechanic near me. That I could say, hey, this is what I've run into. Uh, can you help me out here? I don't have that luxury anymore. 
So I won't do out drives. I won't do um, impellers in uh, the lower units. Not not worth it. I don't have all the tools that they they require now. Some tools you can get away with regular ratchets, but some tools I just I don't want to touch it. But there are some things I will do on a boat. I will do a general tune-up. I will do the winterization, and I'll do minor repairs periodically because that's what I had done in the past, even though I was labeled as a, um, a rigger. So the project I have today, as I said, is I'm not going to show you how to do it because no two boat hulls are identical. Um, even if you got two models from the same company, same year, the insulation is not always the same because you have two different people building the boat. So screws can be in different places, through bolts can be in different places. It's, it's not always consistent on the lower end bolt lines. So let me show you what I got here. This here is a Larson 18 foot bow rider. I think it's 18. 19. 19 foot bow rider with a Merc Cruiser. This boat was left all season in the Connecticut River. It is gunked up pretty damn bad. So I gotta try to clean all this off, which I can do. That's not a problem. I got a, a product to do that, plus pressure washer. Um, but what he really needs done to the boat is, we'll go to a wide angle here. He needs a new starter. All Merc cruisers, their starters are back here in the back of the engine. So even though I'm on a wide angle, this looks like it's pretty far. It's not. From this wall here to that um, starter back here, you're only looking at maybe two feet. The height of this wall, you're looking at probably 28 inches at least. So it's a very steep angle from up here down to there. So in essence, you would be hanging upside down in order to get to that starter. The starter only has um, two or three, one of the two, I don't know until I get in there, wires attached to it. One is definitely your positive, which is this one here. It's attached to the back side of the starter. And then you got your negative up here in the front. To get to this, I have to remove this interior. That's the only way to get to it. So then I will be lying down on a flat floor surface to get to this. A starter is definitely uh, a good 10 pound, eight pound piece of device. So it's not easy to remove. It's just two bolts that hold that in. Uh, the owner had already bought the starter kit, and I'll show you the starter before I put it in. Because when I pull the old one out, I want to put them together and match them up and be sure that he ordered the correct one. So the things I have to do right now is I got to pull the battery out. Then I got to figure out how to remove this interior. I know this box is screwed in along the bottom here. And here, and you can see some of the screws. Oh, let's see, where are we? There's a screw there. On the bottom. So this is like a, a, a plastic box here that'll pull out. But the back here, um, it goes underneath the hull. Or I should say the top part of the hull, the cap. So it's actually wider than the inside of this compartment. So somehow I got to get this to detach from the box. I've already searched underneath here through this carpet, trying to find any kind of screw. This is only half inch plywood, so I would be surprised if a screw goes in from this side into this because how thin this is. It's more than likely going from here into this because of the thickness of this piece we see here. So what I have to do, I don't know where I'm going to set the camera up for this, but I'm going to remove this reflective 
heat shield. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to cut it right off. I'm going to install a new one. Um, that'll be a, a pinch thicker than this and it'll also help in sound as well. Absorb the sound. So let's get started. All right, bear with me as I catch my breath. This is what I was talking about with the corner being extra long and sticking out. That is going underneath there, right here, both sides. There's no way to tilt it back. You have to twist it, which means I had to pull out well, on a center console, it's called combing cushions, but on a a uh, bow rider, it's just called side cushions. So you want to see how cheap these suckers are? Wood screws, piece of aluminum, two wood screws, and two marine plywood. That's it. Here, let me do this. Even if I would have been worth it to undo the screws to drop the bottom part. To drop the bottom part, it still would not have worked. I'd have to, I had to remove the whole thing. So the way these are held, and this is common, is uh, they're through bolted. So here are your bolts all the way down. And it's bolted right in there. And you can access it 
from underneath. What I've done in the past is when I reinstall these, I don't use the existing nuts. I put wing nuts on it. So what I do is I do a fender washer, um, a lock washer. That's the washer. It's round but has a split. And then I do a wing nut. Why? Because then I don't need a wrench in here. I just can hand tighten it and then crank it with my own strength. And I've never had any of these come off. <laughs> the funny thing is when I use a flush mount um, chart plotters and the fish finders in the center console, the way I would, or no, not that. It was the uh, throttles for twin or single engine throttles when I mounted them into the center console I always bolted them what Boston Whaler used were these like rubber tubes that had a built-in nut so as the bolt screws that rubber tube would expand inside the hole that it's in and that would hold your throttle cables throttle cables but your you know your your binnacle your throttle it would hold it in and, and that just that aggravated me because me being a big person when I'm out water testing it I can physically pull the the binnacle up slightly out of the, the mounting hole so what I used to do is I would use um, a fender washer and then I would grind it down one side so I can get the washer to fit onto the bolt because the wash the the bolts right next to the binnacle itself and then I would use a nylock nut on there and then secure it that way and you'd never pull the thing out. I mean you can do 45 50 miles an hour in the open ocean and your your binnacles or your throttles would never pull straight up if you're kind of using them as like a handle to hold on to but what pissed off the mechanics is if they had to go out and work on one of these boats it always took two mechanics to remove the throttles that I put in the trick was is you just put vice grips on it and then slowly back it out from the bolt side that's starting to rain slowly back it out from the bolt from the top and the vice grip would prevent the nut from turn uh, spinning so you can get them off that was the trick so one person could take it off but they couldn't figure that out but that's the way I built a lot of my stuff uh, a lot of the boats I rigged, I rigged them because you're taking something, you're slamming it in the ocean, it has to take that pounding and never ever come loose. So I did that for all my electronic installations, even when I installed just a radio, simple radio in a boat, I installed it in a way that it couldn't be stolen from the boat. So there was a trick to it, a clever trick using starboard. So boats I did, the radios never got stolen. But in our yard, boats that weren't had the radios installed like I would do it, they're always stolen. Because our, our yard backed up against a um, what do you call it? Special housing, and so they would jump the uh, barbed wire fence, break into the yachts, steal TVs, radios, anything they can get their hand on, coffee makers, you know, stupid stuff. One year they even started a fire in one of them and burned burned three 45 footers right to the ground on us but anyways I can ramble on for years and years about marina so I'm feeling raindrops so that means I'm done for today because we're supposed to get showers so uh, let's see if my light will reach here so right there is the starter that's what I gotta get at so it's supposed to be two bolts but as I get in there I will find out that I think um, when you saw in the time lapse me vacuuming this is what I was vacuuming I'm looking down on the back the foam padding was glued on and it, it just it failed you can see here all this foam padding failed and that's what and it separated because that was attached to that um, 
foil like material that it's separated so I'm gonna be using something I probably won't do a foam one uh, I don't know I have to see what I can get my hands on and then this is the top part of the seat and then these three sections here are covered with the seat bottoms it's it's uh was it half inch looks like half inch I might have to do some work on that I don't know it it, it appears to have some really bad dry rot here there and down the other piece I can always fabricate a new piece and then recover it with new rug I don't know I'm gonna run that by the owner and he's got a lot of upholstery that he has to repair get done I'm not a person who does upholstery but I can do certain things that's one thing I can do I've done that before and I can take like this off and recover this whole thing too that's not a problem I have the the staple gun to do something like that with stainless steel staples heck I had to do that on my snowmobile seat so we've come to a stopping point right now I gotta get this covered up before the rainstorm hits and seal up get his battery on a charger because I haven't winterized this boat yet uh, we really won't see bad temperatures for another couple weeks so it's I got a little time but I got a lot of work to do on this boat tune up clean the hull I'm even thinking about removing the boat off the trailer to get the hull well or maybe I'll jack the boat up front get it off the trailer clean the hull bring it down jack the rear of the boat up off the trailer clean the hull bring it back down I, I have no idea depends on my time because I'm getting other people calling me to do their boats Anyways, we're going to stop at this moment, and we'll come back when I uh, work on the starter. So, here's my starter. So, we have to disconnect this wire. This wire is from your battery. That's from your uh, ignition for starting. The bolts, there's two bolts that hold this starter up. I can get so that's one bolt there the other bolt is on the underside you can't see it you have to feel for it so I'm going to disconnect these wires and start working on these bolts I'm not going to show you me removing the bolts because there's no way to get a camera in there so I'll restart the camera once I get these bolts out. Now, the owner provided me with the starter. This is paperwork that comes in the box. It's a uh, test. Let's see here. It's testing paperwork. Be sure that the starter meets specific criterias uh, when you're using a star starter when you're using this. notification here they're showing washer there is definitely no washer on here but <clears throat> looking at this one and looking at this picture, my guess is it goes at the end of it. I don't know why, because there's no bolts that bolt it tight against the gasket. You know what I'm saying? Your bolts are going in from the bottom up. They're not coming in from the back in. So, <clears throat> I don't think that it will be necessary so here's the new starter and what I wanted to do was compare them be 
making sure that they're the same. I'm already seeing a difference. And that's here. So we're going to wire this up just like the old one is. Using this one for the uh, positive stud. This back one for that other wire. Because that's the back one here. And that's your positive stud. But this is where it's different. This one, you have this here. And it's not on here. <clears throat> you have studs in the back here, but there are no studs on here. Front-wise, they look identical. Yeah, my only concern is the length. See, this is longer than this. So I'm hoping that this doesn't hit anything inside the motor. <clears throat> I think it's clear, but. All right, well, let's start getting this bad boy in. One very important note, because I just made the mistake, or I wouldn't say it a mistake, it's just something I forgot. Let me switch and show you the old starter here. <clears throat> when you're installing this, reinstalling this, you're lying down on your side, and so you're looking at this starter this way. The one thing you can't see is this one stud on the back side. That's this one. That holds that single yellow wire. So when you take this off, you're, you're not gonna be able to get this wire off before you undo your two bolts that hold the starter in. It, you just, you can't see it, you can't get to it. It uses a 5 16th socket. <clears throat> this uses a 13 metric to get this nut off. These are uh, 13 metric as well, the bolts. So what you need to do is before you put your starter in, you actually have to attach this one wire to this stud first. Then install your starter. I did the wrong way. I put the starter in, tightened everything up, and then I realized I forgot to do this one wire. I got it on, but that's my sight. I had to do it completely by feel. It took two tries to get the nut and um, lock washer on there, but I just wanted to point that out. Get that wire on first. You don't have to have the nut tight because at least the nut's on there holding the wire. You just need to get the wire on there with the nut before you actually install the starter. It'll make life a hell of a lot easier. So let me show you the starter installed. And there we go. And their new starter. So that's one bolt down there. That's the starting bolt when you're putting it back in. That one wire I was talking about. It's on the back side of this here. The back side of here. Can't even see it. That's the one wire you need to get attached first before you put this starter back in <clears throat> so overall timing just to do the starter let's see I remove the interior which you saw this was a bench seat just to get at the starter and uh, that was about an hour to do that and then to remove and install the new starter was another hour 
So this is not a, a simple job. You're actually twisted quite a bit to get in there. So since I have this whole back open up, meaning no back seat, we're also going to give the boat a tune-up doing plugs. Now I can get to the plugs wicked easy. I can just lay on my side right there and get to the plugs. Uh, replacing the bilge pump on here. And then I'm going to do, when I reinstall the seat, I'm going to modify it a little, make it a bit stronger than what it was from the factory. From the factory, it was kind of cheesy work with the screws and stuff. I'm going to install it where it can be removed a lot more easier and it's going to be a bit stronger. So, this is big guy DIY Robert signing off on this little project. Hopefully this gave you an idea of what it's involved in replacing a starter. Uh, any questions, rifle them down below in the comments. Unfortunately, I can't tell you who the starters buy because I didn't purchase it. So I have no idea. And I think that's it. Give me a thumbs up if this helped. And safe boating.